Welcome back to my channel. I've had requests to share my beauty routine, so today I will be showing parts of my morning routine, but also ideas for creating a tiny and minimal bathroom. Starting off with that morning routine. On an average day, I start by taking a fast-paced walk. Yes, I'm back walking in the mornings and it feels so good. When I get back home, I do some stretching, which I used to skip, but which makes such a difference for how I feel after walking. I wait a little bit before I hop in the shower so I don't sweat after. I don't wash my hair daily like I did when I had a pixie cut, but try to keep it to every third day. To moisturize my body, I use baby oil on my upper body while I'm still wet because it goes on so easily. Then I dry my legs with a towel and use a moisturizer on them. I can't use oil because I use self-tanner on my legs and those two don't go well together. On the second day of not washing my hair, I use some dry shampoo before I put my hair up with a clip. Then I move on to my face which I washed in the shower and dried with my towel. I have quite dry and aging skin and I really should go and get a facial now and then. I'm one of those people who doesn't enjoy going to a spa though. I feel uncomfortable and out of place and can't really relax in that type of environment, which is quite the opposite of what you're supposed to feel there. And that brings me to Forio Sweden, as this content is created in partnership with them. Forio sent me their UFO 2 to try. UFO 2 is their 5-in-1 supercharged facial device and the perfect solution for me. I get the spa treatment, but in my own home and so much faster than at the spa. Each UFO activated mask has its own treatment routine in the Forio app. You just pop the mask onto the UFO, choose the mask treatment in the app and press start. Then you just let the UFO and mask glide around your face and neck and do its thing. Depending on which mask you use, the device has pulsations in combination with thermo and cryotherapy treatment. I've tried a few of the masks, and my favorite is the hydrating Make My Day with hyaluronic acid and red algae. It feels so good against my skin, and in a matter of a couple of minutes, the treatment is done. If I want to indulge, I can repeat, or if I'm done, I just remove the mask from the UFO, rinse it underwater, and pat any remaining mask into my face. Honestly, my skin feels so much more hydrated, nourished, and rejuvenated. Check out the UFO 2 on 21% off on the link in the description box. I use masks every few days or at least once a week, and on those days I don't need to add moisturizer before putting on makeup. I use Clinique ID to even up my skin tone, and on top of that, a little bit of blush and sometimes mascara. And that's it for makeup. Then I brush my teeth. I've used an electric toothbrush for many years and my dentist is always complimenting me on no tartar, so clearly it's working. I was overzealous with a regular toothbrush in my youth though, which affected my gums, so I need to use toothpaste for sensitive teeth. And that's me done and ready for the workday ahead. Now that the morning beauty routine is taken care of, let's shift focus to the bathroom itself. It's tiny. I'd say a third or even a quarter of the size of my previous one. 
If it were an option, of course I would have preferred it to be a little bit bigger, but it is what it is. I just had to adapt how I use it and what I store in there compared to my previous one. Designing a tiny and minimal bathroom can be a challenge, but here are some tips if you have a tiny bathroom too. Or even if you have a bigger one and want to make it more functional, maximize the space while maintaining a clean and minimalistic aesthetic. Declutter and prioritize. Begin by decluttering your bathroom and removing any unnecessary items. Only keep essentials and items that you use regularly. Since I have very limited storage in the bathroom, I keep a little bit of overstock in the closet that I showed you in the latest video. It is a good idea to prioritize functionality over aesthetics when you decide what to keep in your limited space, but I always consider what things look like when I pick them out in the first place. For example, if there are two pump soap dispensers to choose from, and one is colorful and detailed, and the other is simple and neutral, I will always go with the inconspicuous one. That at least creates less visual clutter while there is still soap on hand. I have opted to use this magnetic soap bar holder instead of a soap pump here. It frees up space on the little sink and keeps the soap from getting goopy. I got mine in Paris at a store called Merci a few years ago. A great tip for families that share a bathroom that I've seen around is to all share the same soap, shampoo and conditioner and simple pump bottles. Any individual products like makeup, special hair tools, etc. are kept in each person's room in toiletry bags instead of in the little bathroom. Such a great idea and makes total sense to me. Add vertical storage. When I moved in here, the storage in the bathroom was lacking to say the least. Aside from a heated towel rail, a hook for a hand towel, it was just a tiny cabinet under the sink and a very slim shelf in front of the mirror above. In the beginning I tried to fit everything I needed into the cabinet under the sink, but stuff would fall over and it was so impractical. So I went to IKEA and got myself a small wall hung cabinet with a mirror door. That made such a huge difference. I was now able to put my face, tooth and hair products in that cabinet. The cabinet under the sink now holds extra hand towels, face cloths, toilet paper and stuff like that. There's also my little plastic drawer unit that I bought while in high school in the 1980s. It's been at my mom's house for the past four decades, but has now returned home to me. In there I keep some ointments, hair clips and that kind of thing. I line the little drawers with face cloths that are easy to remove and wash when needed. Keeps the stuff from rattling around too. So, choosing a mirror that doubles as a cabinet allows you to store toiletries or beauty products while maintaining a clean and minimalistic look. Oh, I added a little mirror inside the cabinet too. That way I can look in a mirror while the door to the cabinet is open. Another issue I had when I moved in was that there was no storage at all in the shower. At first I just kept things lined up on the floor. That meant that I have to bend over every time I wanted to use something and water sprayed everywhere. If it was a no hair wash day, I'd still get soaked. When I moved in, I brought the metal shower shelves from my previous place with me. I quickly realized that they were too big, so I returned them and remounted them to the wall for the new owners to enjoy. I did really like the simple look of them and searched for something similar but smaller. 
I found these that come in a few different sizes and styles and there was an adhesive version which was the one I picked. I like the way the taller one covers most of the products and only the pumps are visible. To further utilize the vertical space, you could install floating shelves or wall-mounted cabinets above the toilet to store towels, toiletries and other bathroom essentials. Hooks are great for additional vertical storage. I stuck adhesive hooks to the side of the shower. They hold the not-so-pretty stuff behind the shower curtain. I also added a hook to the inside of the bathroom door. Nothing hangs there permanently, so if you're using the bathroom as a guest, it's empty. I use it to hang my outfit while I'm in the shower and my walking gear for next morning's walk. Such a little thing, but so useful. Opt for slim solutions. I shared my toilet brush hack already in another video, but it falls into this category so I'll quickly mention again. The space I have next to the toilet is very narrow, and I had a hard time finding a narrow enough trash can. So I hacked a toilet brush holder that is now a matching set next to the throne. If you have the room for it, you could also add a narrow cart somewhere in your bathroom. That could hold extra towels, toilet paper, etc. Stylish organization. If you have open surfaces, you can use decorative baskets or trays on countertops or open shelves to corral smaller items like cosmetics, toothbrushes or hair accessories. Corralling them will create less visual clutter than if you place them individually. Grouping items together in these baskets or trays will keep things more neat and organized, but also more visually appealing when they're still semi out in the open. While I keep most things in the cabinets, I still use pretty containers in there because it makes me happy. I have a couple of laboratory glass jars. One holds the small and tall things that would otherwise spill everywhere. Another one contains Q-tips. I also have a couple of small baskets that add a bit of warmth and texture. And that leads to the styling. Obviously go by what you like in terms of styling. Like color, add color. Like pattern, add pattern. For me personally, I prefer a cohesive and light color scheme for this tiny space or any room actually. Neutral colors like whites, grays, beiges or pastels create an illusion of space and contribute to a minimalistic aesthetic. Consider using the same color or pattern for shower curtains, towels and other bathroom accessories to create a visually cohesive look. I've used quite a bit of linen in my apartment, so I opted for that here as well in the shower curtain. I'll say right away, I love the look and feel of it, but it's not great as a shower curtain. It is a coated linen, but it still gets quite wet. I'll keep it for now, but I might end up switching it out down the line. I still have the white towels from my previous apartment. I like white because I can wash them hot and get them really clean. And speaking of white, I always get white consumables where I can. So toilet paper, q-tips and things like that. Why draw attention to those kinds of things and add visual clutter by having different colors is the way I think about them. If you like color, you should totally go for that, but I like that stuff to be neutral. The bath mat used to be the cat mat, but has now transitioned back into the bathroom. If there's room in your bathroom, it's nice to add some carefully curated items like a plant or a decorative jar but be mindful not to overcrowd the surfaces to maintain a clutter-free appearance. The key is to maximize the use of existing space, keep everything organized and visually appealing. So basically keep it simple in your choice of decor and accessories. Opt for clean lines, minimalistic accents, 
and neutral tones to create a calm and serene feeling. I know this is controversial, but I remove labels from some of my products if I don't like the look of them. Here I've removed the label on the dry shampoo, my body moisturizer, body spray, deodorant, chapstick, etc. It just reduces the visual clutter a lot. Oh, I also saved pretty packaging and reused that, so my blush is now living in a Clinique moisturizer jar that I removed the label of and cleaned out. And there you have it, my morning beauty routine followed by some ideas for creating a tiny and minimal bathroom. I hope you found these tips useful and inspiring. Small spaces can still be stylish and functional with a touch of creativity. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, I really appreciate the support. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I'm excited to share more from my new apartment here in Stockholm in future videos. If you're looking for sources, there's a link in the description box that takes you to my website where I'm collecting them for you. If you'd like to receive my personal monthly newsletter, you can add your email address to the list there as well. Thanks so much for watching, I'll see you in the next one. Hej då!